Hey, what's up guys? Today I have the TP-Link Archer AXC300. This thing's supposed to be a crazy fast router and I'm gonna do speed tests and range tests using my Wi-Fi 6 device, which is my iPhone 14 Pro Max and a combination of my Pixel 7 Pro and Galaxy S23 Ultra, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. So full on testing like I normally do. This is a quad band system, which is not, you don't see too often. Um, so four bands, obviously. We have the 2.4, we have two five gig bands and we have the six gigahertz band. It is uh, one mesh, so you can get specific TP-Link extenders to extend the network. It has dual 10 gig ports, which again, you don't see too often. So this thing is pretty much definitely on the high end of routers. So all this fancy stuff, 168 megahertz channel, 6 gigahertz band, 16 streams, uh, like all this stuff. We have parental controls included, QoS, network protection. All right, unboxing this thing. We have some stuff inside this. Power cord, beefy. We have a CAT 6A cable, which does support 10 gigs, which is awesome that they include that. Typically it's CAT 5V cables. And we have a power brick. So this is 100 to 240 volts. Outputs 12 volts and five amps, which is 60 watts of power. Instructions, everything. So this is what the router looks like. The antennas move side to side. They don't move back and down, uh, just in case you guys are wondering. We have a WPS, Wi-Fi, and LED buttons. We have power on and off, re factory reset. We have the USB 3.0, which I'm assuming is for sharing network drives. And here are all our ports. We have the power right here. We have a 10 gig WAN with an optional, you can run Ethernet or you can run SFP, which is basically fiber optic. We have another 10 gig WAN or LAN, and we have a 2.5 gig WAN or LAN, and we have four gigabit ports. So this thing is not short of any ports. There's nothing on this side and you can wall mount this. I am hiding the info. So it's been about a month since I've unboxed this thing using as my main router and so far so good. So no drops, something abnormal, super easy to set up using the Tether app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. We'll go over that as well as this thing has a web interface. Uh, if you want additional options, again, we'll go over that in a bit. Now I did do all the speed test range tests. I have all those numbers here with the devices I showed you guys uh, during the unboxing and before we get into the numbers, I just wanted to show you guys a size difference between a standard router and this router. This router is really, really large. Now, just from the top view, you guys can't see it exactly, but when I hold it from the side, it, it becomes much more evident. This router is definitely beefy uh, compared to a standard size router. And this is the Deco XC75. So this is a standard mesh system. One of my favorite mesh systems for the price, by the way. Uh, and just wanted to show you guys like how big this is even compared to the Deco XC75. All right, so let's get into the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast any router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. Now, thanks to the ports on this thing, because they're capable of 10 gigs per second, I can actually get my full five gigabits. So. When I do the speed test using my computer that's hooked up via ethernet and I also have uh, a 10 gig card on my computer. So when I do the speed test, I can get to those numbers. So I get full five gig up and down very easily. Uh, and again, the cabling, all of this stuff matters. You also need, I have uh, cat seven cables, but cat six a cables works as well. Cat eight cables works as well. So as long as you have all the right parts and they're capable of getting to those speeds, this router will easily get you to those speeds. Now, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. Looking at the Wi-Fi 6 device, there's a drastic reduction in speed and even true for the Wi-Fi 6E device, even though it's more than twice as fast compared to the Wi-Fi 6 device. This is the thing that I wanna point out that just because your internet's fast, just because your router's fast, doesn't mean your Wi-Fi devices are going to be fast. Now, if I were to hook up a laptop, typically they have four by four MUMIMO and they can typically go faster uh, because this would also support that as well. So it really just depends what Wi-Fi device you're using, but I use phones because they're the most common Wi-Fi devices. Now, with that said, if I'm getting 700 megabits uh, plus, 
on a cell phone, that's already amazing because typically when I'm driving around and I'm connected to the tower, I'm getting way less than that, averaging, I don't know, 20 to 30 megabits per second, uh, sometimes even as low as two megabits per second. Now to find out the true performance of this router, I make my computer into a local speed test server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router. Now I've done a separate video on this going into great detail on how to set it up, how it works and everything like that. So if you guys are interested, links below. Looking at these numbers, they are overall a little bit better compared to the internet speed test. And again, that's because these devices are really just kind of capping themselves because if I hook up one of my computers and I go to the other computer, which is acting as a server, I can actually go a lot faster. So now we jump into range test. Now range will drastically vary based on location. So if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in between floors, if you have, uh, if you're in a building with a lot of other walls and routers around, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. So the more of an open area you're in, the better off you're going to be. So in my case, I'm mostly in an open area, not super open, but open enough. So starting at 20 feet, hardly a drop because I'm inside my place at 50 feet. Now I'm outside and still getting pretty good numbers. There is a drop and actually got some really good numbers all the way up to around 180 feet. Uh, and then there was a spike at 300 feet, but pretty much got slower and slower the farther away I went. But the interesting thing was even at 350 feet, it still wasn't cutting off. So I could have technically gone further, but I ran out of space to go in that direction. So very good numbers for range. So jumping into the Tether app, this is what you use to set up and configure. Again, available both on iOS and on Android phones. And a super clean, super nice interface, very simple, tells you all the clients, all pretty much your devices that are connected to this. And you could set up your Wi-Fi name, your, your, your password, your guest network if you wanna do that. Um, you have some basic parental controls. In fact, a little bit more than basic parental controls where you could filter out some certain types of content. And there, there is some playability with time. If you want full parental controls, that does require a subscription and that does give you more options to choose from. But even the non-subscription, which I find to be more than adequate, uh, gives you a decent number of options. So, and then we get to the advanced sections and there are, there's a lot more to play with there. But the interesting thing with this is that um, a question I get asked a lot is basically, can I separate out the bands? And with most devices like the Deco XC75, you can't do that. So the 2.4 and 5 have to be connected. And then the 6 gigahertz is a separate band. With this one, you can. And this one, if you want more advanced sections, there's a web interface that you go to, which is pretty much a default gateway that you type in. Uh, for this one, it was 192.168.0.1. You get way more options on the web interface and you can actually have four separate SSIDs because this is a quad band system, uh, which, which is kind of crazy. And then you could have VPN options, QoS, uh, you know, static IPs, things like that of that nature, IPv6 and stuff as well. Um, so this thing actually has quite a few more options than a standard Deco does. Not as, still not as much options as an ASUS, but from most TP-Link systems that I've tested, this might actually be the one, at least off the top of my head, this might be the one with the most number of options that I've seen. So in summary, this is a fantastic router for anyone with internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits. The fact that you have two 10 gig ports, so if you have a 10 gig unmanaged switch like I do, you can actually have your internet run to one of these, then go from this one to your unmanaged switch, and then boom, you can actually have 10 gig all throughout because you have these two fast ports. You also have you know, an, a 2.5 here and four other gigabit ports. So generally a lot of ports that are usable, uh, but the fact is very good interface, very good speeds, very good range, and it actually sells for a very good price considering this is a quad band with the crazy fast speed rating. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button. I have a lot more router and mesh Wi-Fi videos coming up. In fact, the next one is going to be the Deco PX50, which is a power line mesh system. So I've been testing that for the last few days. So. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.